550 KTRS. This hour is presented by Callier and Thompson Kitchen and Bath. Visit them today at callierandthompson.com. St. Louis owned, St. Louis operated, the pride of Parkway West. He went on to do great things with uh, NBC Dateline. Ladies and gentlemen, Stone Phillips in studio at the Big 550 KTRS. Stone, thanks for joining us. Hey, it's good to be with you. A good to be of, back in St. Louis. A lot of people don't recognize you with this beard. What's going on with this thing? <laughs> you know, my 25-year-old son who's out in Hollywood told me it made me look younger. I don't know how a gray beard makes you look younger. I think but, you uh, look. That's what he told me. You, I'm, I'm going with that. You look like a seaman. You look like, I mean, right? Doesn't he look like a seaman? Just a hard working, hard gruff uh, lobster fisherman or you something. You know, not to take this too far down, but my mom, who who is who is Alzheimer's now, doesn't always recognize me. So now I can blame the beard. All right, you know, there you go. Blame the beard. Uh, we 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 want to talk about this movie because tonight K E T C on uh, Channel Nine here in St. Louis is going to air your documentary called Moving with Grace, and that is a story that you told about your parents' um, declining health. Yeah, you know, this is an issue that so many people, so many baby boomers are dealing with right now, with caring for our a- aging parents. We were in a situation where you know, all three kids, my brother and my sister and myself, all lived away from St. Louis. My parents were still here, loved it here. Right. But it was getting to the point with my mom's increasing dementia and my father's increasing hospitalizations for heart or bladder issues that we really needed to get them closer to one of us. So we had to uproot them from St. Louis move them to North Carolina to be close to my sister. She's right. a doctor over there. And that's what this documentary is about, how they handled that transition. And it wasn't easy. Uh, as somebody who comes from a news background in video and telling stories, I could see this is a perfect place for you to tell a story. But you're in the public. You're out. You're open. Your the rest of your family's not. You're telling a story, a very personable story that is sort of yours and sort of not yours to tell. How hard was it to get everybody to agree to this? You know, everybody was on board, I think, because, because you know, it was an uncertain outcome. There was a little bit of anxiety about that. Uh, you know, was this going to work? Was it, was it the right decision for mom and dad? Uh, and, it, and it was a mixed result in some ways, I would say, because they kind of missed their, their friends in St. Louis and the social adjustment was tough. But everybody was on board. You know, I, I showed the, the piece in the end to my, to my, my mom and dad and my brother and sister, and right. everybody, everybody likes it. Everybody feels, did good, they a, say, feels good about it. Did they say, you have to take this part out, don't, <laughs> no. don't do this, what are you doing? They, know better, you? they know better than even <laughs> ask that. <laughs> How hard was it to interview your mother or your father? Because I suspect as soon as the camera went off, they were great. And when the camera was on, they clammed up. You know, just the opposite. Really? It, it was amazing. You know, I thought about having a camera person shoot this for me, mm-hmm. and I decided, you know what, I'm going to run the camera. I'm just going to do it with a camcorder, hold it in my hand, sit in the chair, and talk to them. And, and it worked really well. I think they were very comfortable, as, as, as you know, so often is the case, that they kind of forgot the camera was there, right. and they were talking to their son, and... Uh, you know, I think they were very, very open, very honest, and uh, we got, you know, it's, it's, it's very real. Yeah. It, it's, it's a story that is happening all over the place, what it to is. do with mom and dad. Um, but, but when you start a documentary, you don't know where it's going to take you. I'm sure there were a few surprises along the way, even for you. Well, you know, there, there was a grand irony in all of this, because my dad was okay with the move. He saw the wisdom of it, that, that really they needed to be near an adult child. My mom was very reluctant. And the big surprise really was that when we got to North Carolina and they got settled in, my mother, who has since been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, really kind of made the adjustment quite easily, maybe because of the, the Alzheimer's. And my dad was the one who really missed his friends and missed St. Louis. So there was a little bit of an unexpected turn when it came. Were they from St. Louis originally? Originally from Texas. We moved here in 1965. My mom's a retired Parkway kindergarten teacher. My dad's a retired Monsanto chemical engineer. Moved here in 1965. And though we hated to leave Texas, we fell in love with St. Louis. How old were you when you moved to St. Louis? 10 years old. Fifth grade, uh, we came here and Claymont uh, subdivision out in Baldwin, and I went to Claymont Elementary School, then Parkway South Junior High School, then Parkway West Junior High School, then Parkway West Senior High School. Now, do you claim yourself a St. Louisan? 
Absolutely. Okay, good. Because, Absolutely. Because I've been here 14 years, and I need another six years before I can claim that I'm a St. Louis, uh, and I that's think. That's about right. Yeah. That's about right. <laughs> uh, we'll, 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 we'll let you in the family. Uh, KT, uh, KETC Channel 9 tonight, 7 p.m. The movie is called Moving with Grace, and I'm sure if you can't see it tonight, it'll air a couple more times on uh on Channel 9, right? It's going to be on Mother's Day. 6 p.m. on Mother's Day this coming Sunday as well. So thanks. Uh, the um, the story of uh, mom and dad moving out, um, and you, you, you touched on this, but a lot of times mom and dad, they don't want to leave the house. They don't want to become a burden to the to the kids. They, I like my independence. Leave me alone. I'm fine. That's the hardest thing children have to deal with. That's, that's a big one. You know, moving them out of the single-family house – to a friendship village in West in, in, in Chesterfield out here was right. one move that we did several years ago. Uh, that was tough. Taking away the car keys from an aging parent right. is a really tough issue. We dealt with that uh, a, a few years back. And one thing I would say is that, you know, it's a strange kind of unsettling experience to take control of an aging parent's life, you know, because they took care of you right. controlled your life as a child they took the, the keys away from you now that, you're taking the keys away from exactly them. so right. the, the the roles are reversed but one thing i would say at least in my experience is keep talking about all this stuff even when you have to make the tough decisions and follow through with it and move forward i still think there's some value in talking to them about how they feel about it even if it just means letting them be cranky and gripe a little bit about it it's it's i think it's important to just keep talking about it make light of it if you have to uh but give them a chance to talk about it, and yeah. communicate it, and let you know how they feel about it. Uh, I can ask this question because I have an odd first name, McGraw, but it's Stone's your real first name. On my birth certificate. How did they come up with Stone? What's the story? <laughs> you know, my dad had a, had a friend named Stone Cooley when he was growing up in, in, you know, in, in Texas. And, uh, and my gran- great-grandfather's name, his first name was Stonewall. And they shortened it to Stone. Stone. So those two, those two uh, elements kind of came together. Has that helped you or hurt you? I in don't your know. Career? How about McGraw? What do you think? Well, it hasn't helped me. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still here. I'm 13 years going nowhere fast. But I get that question a lot. I'm sure you do too. So, uh, your son's name is Streeter. 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 Yeah. Now, that, another great, interesting first name. How did that come about? We looked at a map of Texas. We were kind of. You know, coming up empty-handed for names, and there was a little Streeter, Texas, you know, uh, in the heart of Texas, and uh, and so we named him Streeter, never having visited Streeter, Texas, and when we finally did, it was like a dried-up creek bed and, a, and, a, and an abandoned post office. Wait, you were running out of names. How many kids did you have? Fifteen? <laughs> one, one, one. One. You're running out of we kids' couldn't, names. We couldn't even. We couldn't even come up with one. <laughs> We're not real creative types here. Holy okay? mackerel. I'm running out of names. One kid. <laughs> I'm afraid to ask, what is your dog's name? <laughs> well, Tom. Bu- Bucky is no longer with us. All but. right. Fair enough. Uh, are you still working for PBS full time or what do you, what's, what's your day? No, I'm days? doing, I'm doing kind of freelance stuff, independent stuff, things that I'm interested in. I did a, a story last year on um, head impacts in youth football. Yeah. Uh, a Virginia Tech study that was a groundbreaking study on, on, you know, putting these sensors in helmets and seeing what the g-forces were with seven and eight year olds playing football pretty eye-opening stuff pretty scary stuff yeah yeah it was you know i played football had a couple of concussions so that's that's an issue that uh, that i have been following closely stone phillips is uh the uh, self-produced documentary uh, about his parents it's uh, tonight on uh, channel 9 k-e-t-c channel 9 7 p.m tonight moving with grace and it's going to re-air on uh mother's day stone phillips you are always welcome here in studio anytime you come by uh, stop in and We'll uh, have a chat. Great to be with you. You got it. Stone Phillips here, who looks like the old man and the sea with the beard. <laughs> looks good. Uh, 828 here on the Big 550 KTRS.